Yo, what's good peeps? With Yakuza Like a Dragon approaching its PlayStation 5 release, I wanted to try and shed some light on around 15 tips and tricks to help you get started and what I personally wish I knew prior to playing the game. I'm glad you showed up. I've been waiting a long time. If you're new to the series then you may find that Yakuza Like a Dragon isn't necessarily an easy game and you will get defeated by some stronger enemies time and time again. Let's go. Now while you can go and eat to replenish your HP, there is a way that you can restore both your HP and MP without wasting any of your valuable money or items. You can go back to the place where you started or once you get to chapter four, you will be able to unlock a bar that you can also use. While you may have to go out of your way to go to one of these places, it can be a better way to get your HP and MP back up without wasting any money on food. I guess this might sound a little bit like common sense, but as the game auto saves, sometimes it is very easy to forget to manually save your game. And if you do get killed or lose money, then sometimes the previous auto save could be over an hour away. So I personally tend to save after a difficult battle or just roam in the streets for over an hour collecting bits and pieces. And sometimes I do find that the auto save doesn't always click in until after quite an important scene or progress within the game. Also, manual save does give you a chance to simply go back to a specific point if you feel like you've made a mistake at a certain stage. Once you've unlocked the Namba's healing powder skill, it is a real game changer as it gives you the ability to heal your party members during battle. This does take up a turn, so you kind of have to be on the smart side of things about how you go about using it. But another cool feature of this skill is that you do not necessarily have to be in a battle to use it. You can use it when you are wandering around too, and it still uses some of your MP, but it can also be really handy to have people heal up before you get into your next battle. In the early part of the game, getting money together is a little bit of a chore. You do some treasure hunting to move the story along where you do look under vending machines. And while you can earn chump change doing this, it is still worth treasure hunting under the vending machines the whole time you play the game, as you never know what you may find. It could be some money, a healing item, or even something you can sell for a nice amount of money. Hmm? To me, the survive bar is an awesome addition to the game. Ichiban meets some cool new friends on his journey, which brings us to one of Yakuza Like a Dragon's other new additions, Bonds. Ah, uh, don't hate the crows. They're just trying to get by, you know? In fact, crows are pretty smart. They've even been known to stop rummaging. This is the relationship between Ichiban and his buddies, and you can increase this by fighting with them and doing activities with them also. However, in order to move your bond up a level, you have to make sure that you chat to each member while you are in the survive bar. Sure, it's a deal. You can get some decent money by hunting bugs in this game and there is even a mission that requires you to do this. However, bugs are not just all over the place and if you do not know where to look, it can be a little bit of a pain in order for you to actually try and find out where these specific bugs could be hiding. Simply save yourself some time and head over to Hamakita Park. Here you can find all the bugs you could ever need. To me, the job system in Yakuza Like a Dragon is a really cool addition to the game and something many people are having a lot of fun with. Some of the crazy attacks that happen are just simply hilarious. 
I'm not going to lie, it can be very easy and tempting just to keep your players in one job for the duration of the game. And while in theory this is a sound move as they will get super strong, you actually do miss out on some of the skills by doing this and plus in my honest opinion it's not as much fun. Yakuza like a dragon, when you do lose a fight in the game, half of your money is gone. This is one of the most frustrating aspects of the game, especially if you do have a lot of money on you. The way you can avoid this from happening so much is by heading over to an ATM machine wherever you do see it. These are scattered throughout the whole of the city, so it's never really that much of annoyance to do this, and I definitely do recommend always regularly using the ATM machine. in Yakuza Like a Dragon is very very big and it can take a while to get around the whole entire city and sometimes be annoying if you keep getting into fights when all you want to do is get from point A to point B. The game does have a fast travel system that is done with taxis and when you are in the area and you do see a taxi basically all you have to do is walk up to it and interact with it and you will unlock fast travel from that particular place. <laughs> There are some things we refuse to let change, like the uncompromising flavor of our senbei. In the place we Pretty much one of the biggest aspects of Yakuza Like a Dragon is to try and have as much money or make as much money as possible. In Chapter 5, you will be able to access the company management minigame where you aim to take the company to rank 1. Whilst this minigame might seem quite overwhelming, especially when it comes to the stakeholders meeting, but trust me, it is very straightforward and potentially the easiest way to make a ton of money. By ranking up in this game, you also get the ability to unlock a hidden party member that is missing so it is worth spending around three to four hours in rising your company to the top and by smashing all of those stakeholders meeting which is very very straightforward you will be making tons of money in no time. Thanks everybody, thank you! The meeting went great! Personally, stats are quite an essential part of Yakuza Like a Dragon as it comes with many benefits. You might only be able to talk to some NPCs to open up certain options if you have the necessary stat, such as charisma for charming them. Personally, stats are divided into six key categories, passion, confidence, charisma, kindness, intellect, and style. And whilst there are many ways to increase all of these individually throughout your adventure, I found that a Wanabana vocational school is probably the easiest way to get a stat boost. Now whilst this is very expensive as a method, once you obviously do increase your ranking in the company management minigame that I mentioned earlier, then you should have enough money to invest into your education. <laughs> you finish up in the bar owner around chapter 3 you will get access to the skeleton key which is a master key that you can use in order to unlock any of the silver safes that you see scattered around the city now whilst this is all good in my honest opinion the best loot that you can get in the game is usually found in the gold safe which you will need the gold key for once you have the ability to switch jobs in chapter 5 in hello works and you also have a charisma level of at least level 3 simply equip the foreman job which will give you the ability to demolish certain blockage within the map turns out that some of these will actually lead to black market spots where you will be able to purchase gold safe keys at around 10,000 yen each. As this is quite pricey early on, it's probably best to do this after you do progress in the company management mini game. Should I open it? Sweet! <laughs> 
throughout the city you will see many restaurants scattered but there is a very good reason that you should be trying to visit all of these spots especially before a fight now whilst you can restore hp and mp boost your bonding with your party you can also create mill combos which will temporarily boost the character's attack and defense the duration of the effect depends on the type of mill combo with small mills obviously giving you a shorter boost and large mills providing the longest effect all unlocked mill combos will be displayed in the established menu so you can easily recall any of them that you found to work the better for you <laughs> Once you are rolling in the cash, after doing the company management mini game, it's best to use some of that cash and fund support into the romance workshop, which becomes available during chapter five as part of the story. It serves as the hub for upgrading weapons and also crafting some new weapons and gears. And I know this can be pricey to fund as I do believe the top level cost around 20 million yen, but it will potentially make it much more easier to destroy much more challenging enemies later on in the game. That's what I'm talking about. As mentioned previously, dying in Yakuza like a dragon can be very annoying, especially if you haven't saved the game and you are quite far into the game and you have a lot of money in your pocket. Whilst this might be obvious, I would always recommend be careful about crossing the roads, especially with those cars because they can knock you over. I've personally been knocked over quite a few times without even realizing that the cars are actually there. And trust me, it will feel worse if you are running low on health, maybe just coming out of a fight and then you get knocked over and potentially it's game over. Hey, are you all right? Is there anything we can do to... Yo, like most Yakuza games, Yakuza Like a Dragon is filled to the brim with sub stories. Whilst these can be done at your own leisure, I personally would recommend doing them as soon as you come across them, as you do kind of get the opportunity to divert from the story and also have a laugh. But most importantly, some of the sub stories allows you to unlock some pal mates, which are extremely useful when it comes to summoning when you do want to fight against some really difficult bosses. You want to go? Do you want your milk or maybe your toy? Are you feeling fuzzy? Susumu <laughs> chan, you won't play with me? What's wrong? Are you hungry? <laughs> Anyway, peeps, just a quick few tips and tricks to kind of get you guys up and running, just to give you a little bit of food for thought as to how to approach the game. These are some of the things that I potentially wish I knew prior to actually playing the game. Still a phenomenal, phenomenal game, but I do feel that some of these tips may enhance your overall experience. Do let me know your thoughts in the comments as to whether you are looking forward to picking this game up for the PlayStation 5. Have you been playing this game on the other platform since its release? And what experience have you been having? Do do also drop any tips and tricks that you feel may help newcomers to the series that I may have not covered. As always, if you did enjoy this urban gameplay video, be sure to smash the like button. Do hit the subscribe button if you haven't done so before. And until next video, we definitely say peace out, peeps. Yeah! Thanks for all your hard work.